Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Library, presented by today's foremost professional sportsman, who will share proven methods and techniques that will help you become a better and more successful fisherman. I got one now. Oh, what are we talking about? Oh, man, I'm talking about a big fish. Oh, baby, look at that big old bass. I tell you what, folks, this is exciting fish. Big, giant bass and lily pads on a spinnerbait. One of my favorite techniques for catching really good trophy bass. Oh, it's exciting. Ah, I'm talking about exciting fishing. <laughs> Speaking of exciting fishing, folks, I'd like to invite you to the Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Outdoor Videotape Library. I'm Roland Martin and I'm going to be your host today on today's segment, Everything I Know About Spinnerbait Fishing. 45 minute tape, the whole ABCs of spinnerbait fishing. Really nice trophy lunker largemouth on catching bass from Connecticut to California. Rivers, lakes, tidewaters, reservoirs, all types of waters and all types of spinnerbaits. Everything from this big number giant number seven trophy bass spinnerbait to little bitty number two uh, deep water reservoir spinnerbait. So stay tuned, and I'm going to show you some exciting action. Folks, let's start off talking a little bit about the history of a spinnerbait. Here's one of the, what I call the old-timey, but yet favorite spinnerbaits of all times. A number four Colorado blade, a long wire shaft, about a half ounce lead head, a little Burke trailer. I've been using this combination better than 20 years, but it's been around a lot longer than that. In fact, back in the 30s, the uh, Al Floss shimmy wiggler uh, lures were around. Uh, I looked in some uh, Sears catalogs of 1898, and they had some inline spinners, not exactly like the clothespin type, but rather inline. The clothespin type spinnerbait, like this, clothespin type, were invented by a Tulsa fireman in the 40s. Been credited to a Tulsa fireman. The uh, Bushwhacker, Bomber Bushwhacker, had one of the first commercial available uh, spinnerbaits that was much like this one here. Now, I've gotten into the action, and over the last 20, 25 years, I've invented several different model spinnerbaits. And, and the most common of, of which that you might well recognize is the Roland Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait, brought to you presently by Blue Fox Tackle Company. This is a number five willow leaf blade with the number one Colorado a blade in front, a half ounce uh, lead head with a heavy duty musky type wire or northern pike type wire and complete with the trailer hook as well for those short striking fish. Now this particular spinnerbait I created while trying to catch big lunker bass here on Lake Okeechobee, Florida some six or seven years ago with the help of my turkey buddy George Smith we had kind of found a secret for catching these big bass in hydrilla up in the northern end of the lake. We dropped this big spinnerbait, or one similar to it, into the lily pad, or rather the hydrilla holes, and just hang on with big heavy tackle. It wasn't until about 1985 that I decided to take a spinnerbait like this and start throwing it in places like Michigan and Wisconsin. And, and I remember a big tournament, hi folks, <laughs> I remember a big tournament uh, where I almost won the tournament on a, on a number five a Willie spinnerbait in Wisconsin. That particular year of 85, I won some $92,000 on this Willie Leaf spinnerbait and launched the largest spinnerbait campaign ever documented by any lure company. This particular number five spinnerbait on this particular body has sold absolutely countless of millions of, of product. And thank you very much, folks, for supporting that Blue Fox Tackle Company. Now, folks, the tackle available for today's spinnerbait fishing is so, so far superior than it was 20 or 25 years ago. One of my favorites is this 6 to 1, 4 to 1 Shimano reel. For example, I can use it on the 6 to 1 ratio, and I can throw this lure out and buzz it on the surface. I can wake it through the lily pads or, or hydrilla flats or any of the shallow weedy conditions that I might have here in this great southern lake or with a flip of the switch I can throw it to the four to one ratio and for wintertime fishing when I want to retrieve it slow and deep I can now with just a four to one ratio retrieve it slow and deep and that gives me more power because not only do I have a higher mechanical advantage with four to one 
But in this heavy brush and cover, which you're often fishing spinner baits, and I'll explain in a minute, we're bumping stumps, even though those lily pads have no stumps. I'll talk about the philosophy of how to fish a spinner bait. We're bumping heavy cover. We're in ambush points. So often we need that four to one ratio for the torque and the power of pulling a big heavy bass out of that stuff. Also in that four to one ratio, my drag is set much tighter. In fact, you, you gain one third more mechanical advantage in your cranking and in your drag power with this particular reel. But for the time being, let's keep it in the six to one up ratio. Okay, I have several other spinner baits here I wanted to talk about real quick. Notwithstanding this number five that I won some $92,000 in 1985, on uh, starting with the big win I had on the on the Hudson River in, in Canada, or rather Hudson River in New York, I went the next spring to Lake Lanier and won another very large, impressive BASS tournament. So this particular spinnerbait is by far my favorite. I use it most of the time through most of the country. However, there's other conditions and there's other spinnerbaits. Let's talk about cold weather and let's talk about little bitty spinnerbaits, little grub combinations for say deep, clear winter lakes. Now here's a very small deep water, clear water, cold water situation spinnerbait. It's a uh, about a quarter of an ounce head with a very short wire because we're fishing open water, a little number two Colorado blade on a good ball bearing swivel, and instead of a skirt, a small grub combination. This makes for good deep water uh, pumping. Now how we fish a spinnerbait like this, instead of waking it on the top like that big number five, often We'll just throw it out in the, in the cold weather and fish it deep and slow right on the bottom, fishing it much like a tail spinner or a Little George type of, of spinner and just barely pump it and move it and pump it and move it. So you can see from the couple combinations that I've shown you today, spinner baits are probably the most versatile lure that you'll have in your tackle box. So let's try another area of this great lake and I'm going to show you another technique. So hang on. Now there's a good looking spot. A good looking point, folks, or a good looking ambush point. Now today we're spinnerbait fishing and the precept of really good spinnerbait fishing is try to identify your ambush points. Now what do I mean by an ambush point? An ambush point is a spot where these bass can hide and conceal themselves and also take advantage of the current or the wind that's working towards them and it also take in consideration the, the sun and the shade that's created uh, that they very much need. You know, bass have no eyelids on their eyes, so they can't wear sunglasses like I'm doing today, and they can't close their eyes. So they must find an area, like this ambush point that I'm looking at here, where they can hide from the shadow of the sun and be in the shadow uh, from the sun, like on these points where the wind and the current's moving in, consequently, where they'll position themselves in a feeding position in a shady, secluded, protected ambush point. That's what we're going to do today on these reed clumps or fish ambush points. Okay, just kind of look at this diagram for a minute. We've prepared a diagram that will fully explain how the wind is pushing the water towards the point and how the sun creates the shade, positioning the bass. Now folks, as you look at this diagram, you must consider that the wind is is moving the current down a little bit. Now to make the, the, the presentation really look real, you must have your spinnerbait kind of coming downwind. That means throwing it kind of into the wind or coming down with the current. Now I kind of like to take advantage of the fact that the bass is facing the current. He can't swim backwards. So you notice he's facing the wind. Now the last thing you want to do is have the cast come towards his tail. You'll scare the fish away. That's kind of like uh, if you were a big bass and something were attacking you from the rear, would you eat that spinnerbait? No, quite the converse. You want to have the lure come towards the fish, come towards his face. So therefore, in this situation, I'm going to throw slightly into the wind and have my spinnerbait come towards the fish. Okay, take this big old ambush point up here. Now, any of these points are good. I'm going to fish the left side of it for the simple reason that's the shady side. I'm going to make a long cast and I'm going to throw five to ten foot past the ambush point, five to ten feet, all the way up there. Let my spinnerbait, this is heavy line, 15, 17 pound line, come down the edge of the, of the grass. In fact, in this case, I'm in the grass. Bump the stump. Now, what do I mean by bumping the stump? 
Well, there's no stumps here. This is just a weedy lake here in, in Lake Okeechobee, but it's much like a, a natural lake in Michigan. It's much like the Thule Swamps of the Sacramento River in California. It's much like many natural areas that we have around this great country. We want to actually bump this spinnerbait, physically bump into these bulrushes or into these reeds or into these tules that we have here today. So past it five or six feet, hold the line over against it, and bump the lure into that stump. Bump the stump. Another thing might, might make a couple, couple casts. I'm using a casting rod, five and a half foot casting rod. It has a good a six to one, four to one retrieve ratio. Heavy duty line. I like to use at least 14 pound test line, sometimes 20, even 25 pound test line for these heavy big, uh, big bass in, in a real heavy lake situation like we have here. So it, actually sometimes I'll move the rod over to the edge of the toolies or edge of the bulrushes and keep bumping the stump. Now folks, you might wonder why I'm using a chartreuse spinnerbait today, but if you notice, this water clarity is really kind of dingy. I have it about four, five, six inches deep and you can just barely see that, that blade. It's a, it's, a, it's a bright spinnerbait, but it's kind of real dark water. The wind stirs this, this lake up and, and uh, therefore this, uh, you need a really bright spinnerbait for today's water condition. Okay, I'm gonna throw five to 10 foot past the ambush point hold my rod down, start retrieving it in, and hold the lure against the bulrushes. Oh, there's a strike, there's a strike, there's a strike. I got one now. Son, oh boy, I tell you what, <laughs> yes sir. Okay, come on boy, hey, look at that one. Big old trophy large bass. I'm telling you what, big old spinnerbait bass, that's what it's all about, boys. That's what it's all about. I'll tell you what, big old fish in the shallow water. Hit that spinnerbait right on that ambush point, just according to Hoyle, that was Perfect, son, I love it. That's a great, nice, big old bass, too. I have real heavy tackle here today, folks. I'm running 20 pound test line. I'm running, uh, that happens to be a, the half ounce bait I showed you before with the number four Colorado. And I'm running my, my heavy duty reel, five to one ratio on this particular rod. And a five and a half foot Beastmaster rod. It's really something I really like. I like the 1553 rod. And, and in Shimano's rod line, it's 1553 means the one means a one piece. The five five means it's five and a half feet. And the number three of the 1553 means that it's a number three action. So for spinnerbait fishing, look for that medium action rod. You don't want it real, real stiff. And you don't want it real, real soft about a number three action on the Shimano line because there's a number one action is real light, number two is pretty light, number three is just right, number four is more of a jig or a worm rod, and number five are for fishing for gorillas or something. I can't even use a number five, it's too strong. A number three action is just perfect. Now as I told you before, vers versatility is the key of spinnerbait fishing. This is just one small pattern. These points or these ambush points of these am uh, of, of these. Uh, Tules and these cattails. Lake Okeechobee, much like in many lakes, has many types of grass, many types of cover. This is just one pattern. So hold on a minute, and I'm going to show you some more exciting action. Well, folks, here's an entirely different pattern. This is a grass area full of needle grass. That's a, that's a long eel grass. And then this is a pepper grass right here. That's a heavy pepper grass that's uh, very, very good. It's kind of scattered, thin grass. Between the eel grass and the pepper grass, it's just a few little open holes, as you see down here. It's the kind of area that you'd find bedding bass in. In fact, if you look real close with a good pair of Polaroid glasses, you'll see little open holes in the grass as you get near them. And that's probably old spawning beds or possibly new spawning beds. Now, what I've found in a spawning situation is often a small, very weedless type of spinnerbait. Now this is also a spinnerbait that I might use in some, some deep open water. It has a little number two Colorado blade on it. It has a little bitty grub. It's only a quarter of an ounce. And I'm throwing it on fairly light line. This is about 14 pound test line. What I'm gonna try to do is hold my rod up and just very carefully, I'll throw this to the camera and I'll just show you how it comes across the grass. Holding the rod up, it just, it's just a little bitty spinner. I'm just kind of shaking it through there. Just kind of shaking it through the grass, fishing it slow. It's thick grass. And if I, I'm going to do that again just to show you. Throw it out in front of the camera. Just shake it across this grass, just slow and easy. 
and they'll hit it right on top. It's just in a very aggravating type of grass. It's very thick grass. And I'm going to try to make longer cast now. Hold my rod kind of high. Just kind of milk it over the grass. If I see a hole, and again with my Polaroid glasses, I'll often see a hole. I'll drop it in the hole, thinking it might be just a hole in the grass where they might live, or possibly even a spawning bass hole. Just kind of work along. And in a big lake like Lake Okeechobee or any of the northern lakes, like uh, some of the Great Lake areas that you have a lot of heavy weed cover, you'll find massive schools of grass, massive areas of grass, and massive schools of bass in the grass. But not just everywhere. It seems like they so, sort of concentrate just, you know, a few bass uh, in a spot. And then there'll be vast areas with practically no fish. But you'll actually find schools of bass in this grass. Now the reason for having just such a light spinnerbait is when you have just a little bitty quarter ounce spinnerbait like this, it really does crawl over a lot of cover. That one got hung up. But a big half ounce or three quarter ounce body will really get down on that grass bed. Well, there's a good spot. Throw it out there and just kind of hold the rod up and just kind of milk it along. fish. It's almost like plastic worm fishing. The spinnerbait is so versatile it can be used as a surface lure, it can be used as a deep structure lure, it can be used of course as a crankbait as a reflex action bait like we're using it today. Basically we're we're kind of fishing the reflex action aspect of it more often than not. I like to play a little visual game. It's a mental game. And that is, I'll look at an ambush point, and I'll look at the way the wind's blowing, and I try to imagine that there's a big fish there. And that helps me do two things. Number one, I position the fish exactly. By imagining that there's a fish by a certain grass patch facing the current like they should be facing the current, with the shadow of the sun, uh, you know, where they're taking advantage of the shadow, I can, then, I can then position the fish and then I can make the right cast. I can drop this spinnerbait just right in front of their face. Because the, the, the fish, oh there was a good fish right here. They swir swirled the water right here. I don't know, it probably scared a big old bass here. But anyway, as the spinnerbait, I want to throw just past the, the, the fish, try, past the bass, and as the spinnerbait approaches the fish, approaches the bass, I'll drop the spinnerbait on top of them. Drop them down and uh, reflexively he'll strike the lure. Just dropping the spinnerbait down in this grass is probably the best approach. <clears throat> you can also just reel it on the top. Just a straight reel is all right, but it seems like you get hung up a little bit more often. And I'll try some of that too. But the main thing is using a light body. With a really light body like I have here today and with that really good safety pin design, there's very little grass catching on this bait. You notice here, uh, it just really stays free. Now, seems like at times a uh, skirt works good or the grub. I'm trying the grub today just to show the many options that are available in spinnerbait fishing. Some of the western lakes and the Clearwater reservoirs of uh, the Colorado River chain Often a real big bladed spinnerbait is good even in spawning water, but remember in this weedy cover, you can't work a real big blade without getting hung up a lot. So I've, I've chose just a real small blade, and I've chose just more or less dropping it in the potholes. One of the secrets of my spinnerbait fishing is constantly rigging and re-rigging a spinnerbait. In this application, I want it to be weedless. So basically what I've done is taken a little light quarter ounce head, combined it with a number two blade, uh, Colorado blade, a nice ball bearing swivel, and a little grub. Now this particular spinnerbait isn't sold this way. This is just one I kind of make up. So I doctor the spinnerbaits up. And I'm just going to show you just, oh, oh, I missed one then. <laughs> 
I'm going to show you one that's a little bitty bass. Drop it in that hole again. See if he'll hit it. Oh, there's a little bitty bass. He made a little bitty swirl. But I doctor these spinner baits up. In fact, this particular spinner bait was one of my Roland Martin little quarter ounce deals, and I cut the wire a little shorter. I didn't like the wire as long as it was, and I put a grub on it instead of uh, of the skirt. So it has, uh, it really has. I custom alter almost all my spinner baits just from time to time. I also use a. Uh, uh, a little snap ring, a little snap swivel. Well, there's one. Hey, hey there we go. I got one now. Oh, son. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Here he comes. He's in the grass. <laughs> oh, son. Oh, boy. That's a good one. Nothing wrong with him. Come on, boy. Hey, look at that. Son, that's what it's all about. That's a big old, that's a big old Okeechobee special. I keep thinking of Santee Cooper, too. Santee Cooper in South Carolina is where I learned the ABCs of my spinnerbait fishing. And I certainly caught a lot of nice bass at Santee Cooper as well. A lot of good hydrilla, a lot of good joint grass. There's a good fish here. Come on. Ha <laughs> ha, grass bed special. Nothing wrong with that. Boy, I love it. That's probably a big spawning bass. And, you know, let's be conservationists about our bass fishing today. That's probably a big female. Thousands of eggs. So, folks, we want that fish to spawn and be caught again another day. A really nice bass. But like what I said before, there's often several fish in an area. I know that there's some spawny beds in here. I see them on the bottom. And that's sure indication that there's other good fish around. That's the second strike I've had. I had a, probably a little male bass to hit in here just a second ago. Just kind of drop it in the, in the holes, drop it in the grass. Fish it about like you would a plastic worm. You know, there's so many ways to fish a spinnerbait. Buzzing and bulging spinnerbaits in lakes like Lake Washita and the Cedars. Fishing them deep on the bottom and at, at Toledo Bend. I remember when Cliff Craft won, won, almost won the, the tournament, had the biggest string of the, of, the, of the day, some 44 pounds, with me as a partner, fishing a spinnerbait in 15 feet of water. I've won several tournaments, uh, like I said before, some $92,000 one year on fishing uh, that number five spinnerbait in both uh, New York and in Wisconsin. Just drop it down. There's one. There's one. Hey, oh, son. That's a better fish yet. Oh, whoa. <laughs> hey, another big fish. I tell you, this 20 pound line is important. 20 pound line is a big deal. Have a good heavy line in this pepper grass. I mean, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Get out of, the, get out of those reeds. Now, the reeds are the worst deal here. Gotta get, get the reeds out of here. Oh boy, that's a good one. Oh, I got a good weedless trolling motor. Boy, that's a big fish. I'm telling you what. Come on, boy. Good fish. Come on. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Love it. I love it. You know, another thing about working these areas, as quiet as you can, I know it's hard to do with a trolling motor, but you try to be quiet. Okay, he was just barely hooked. No, he's hooked a little bit. What a head! Giant big bass head. Huge, huge head bass head. Look at this thing. That is really something to behold. You know, we catch decent fish like this all year round, but, but to really catch the big ones, you need to be fishing. This time, oh, I got my trolling motor on. You need to be fishing mainly in January, February, and March for the big, big spawners like this one here. Now, you know, we have a catch and release program, particularly in Lake Okeechobee, where our guides that work out on my marina have a responsibility that we try not to kill hardly any of those size fish. We ask our clients to release all the bass over five pounds, unless it's a bass to be mounted. Because with our really great technology we have today, our better boats, our better depth finders, our better rods and reels, we're, we are capable of just about exterminating those big bass in any lake. So we, uh, we catch and release most of the fish we catch. Okay, now, there's nothing sacred about a spinnerbait. Let me make that statement. 
Again, there's nothing sacred about a spinnerbait. You can alter it in any fashion. The reason why I'm a successful spinnerbait fisherman, and the reason why Blue Fox, Fox Tackle has me represent them in, in, in spinnerbaits is that I have a lot of varieties of spinnerbaits. I keep changing the blades. I use all color blades, all size blades, all color skirts, all size trailers, all size wires, heads, bodies. I make, I make spinnerbaits, and I want to show you how to do that. I'm going to get my pair, trusty pair of pliers, and I'm going to take a spinnerbait. First of all, what I'm going to do in this spinnerbait, just to show you that nothing's sacred in spinnerbaits, is I'm going to twist this head right here, and what I'm going to do is take this blade off. Now, let's see what we can do with that blade. There's a lot we can do with that blade. The whole lot. First of all, you open up your spinnerbait box and you dig around until you get to where the blades are. And folks, when I say blades, I'm talking about blades. I have every color size Colorado blade, every size willow leaf blade, every size and every color hammered threes and fours and fives and sixes and sevens and eights. Look at that blade, folks. He's talking about a big blade. <laughs> That's a number eight. <laughs> There's little bitty blades, there's great big blades, green blades, yellow blades, purple blades. Now, let's just for the heck of it, let's take that number four Colorado, Colorado blade off. Let's just take a number five willow leaf. Now, I know it'll work, but again, there's nothing sacred about switching spinner baits, blades. Put the number five on, take your pliers, and just twist that to the side right there. And that is a perfect combination. Now, let's see if that thing's working right. Okay. The wind, see what the wind does? That's just a little bit of wind blowing on that blade. That's a good swivel. It's a good ball bearing swivel. See that's just how much wind there is? It just spins forever in that little bit of wind. Now, that's a single blade. Okay. Let's look at some other combinations. What about white? Well, white blades are really a great combination for particularly lakes like Toledo Bend. Look at that big thing. A number eight willow leaf, white. Huge, huge, huge blade. Huge, huge swivel. Another thing to talk about when you start switching into these big blades, or be sure to use the larger uh, saltwater type or musky type swivels like this one here. This is a very expensive swivel. In fact, the most expensive component of this whole spinnerbait is the swivel itself by far more expensive than the blades or the body. That's cer certainly a good combination in the winter time or in the cold weather times, say on Toledo Bend Reservoir, dropping it in the big holes of hydrilla. Places like Texas and Oklahoma, Oklahoma, the muddy lakes of Lake Eufaula in the, in the summertime, 80 degree water temperatures, the bass can't see too well, so therefore they need a real bright neon blade. I've caught thousands of bass with just really bright blades in the hot summertime in the muddy water. Let's talk about muddy water for a second versus clear water. Spinner baits, of course, are, are loud, noisy baits or reflex action lure. In the cold winter time, the fish, the bass, don't have the lateral line sensitivity to be able to feel and, and, and be aware of the presence of even a noisy lure like a spinner bait. So they don't bite well in muddy water. So if, if you go out in cold weather when it's below 50 degrees, that's cold weather, below 50 degrees, and the water's muddy, I'd forget about spinnerbait fishing. Spinnerbait fishing is, is not the best choice. A reflex action lure is not the best choice for cold, muddy water. A better choice for that cold, muddy water would be a slow-moving jig, for example. Okay, and conversely, in the summertime, that same muddy water, say 80 degrees, now you have higher metabolism of the bass, the lateral line sensitivity of the fish can pick out and detect and be more aware of movement in the presence of a lure. And they can feel and hear this lure much more vividly. So that now a spinnerbait is the choice of a muddy water fisherman, and particularly shallow muddy water full of stumps, trees, bushes, and other such ambush points in the muddy reservoir. Well, let's look at a really good successful lure that I've just caught a lot of fish on. And that's this double-bladed quarter-ounce special. Oki Bug brought it out many years ago, and it's called the little SOB, and I've since duplicated it on the Blue Fox line. But uh, 
The two little bitty blades, about like this on a quarter ounce head, makes for an awful good spinner bait. Now one complaint I've always had in, in lure manufacturers, they'll often dip the, the, the paint. And in this case, the paint's all dipped. I don't have my knife. But I need to scrape all the paint off the wire. That makes a little bit of difference. Now as far as skirts go, we have every size skirt that is imaginable. I, you know, I think basically I use skirts, a lot of whites and a lot of chartreuse. And because this is a yellow head, let's, let's go with a, a good combination like a white and chartreuse. How do you put a skirt on a spinnerbait? Well, it's a pretty basic question. But I like to reverse the skirt, and I'll tell you why. When I put the skirt on backwards like this and push, push it up in position, The, the skirt kind of flows backwards, or flows forward, and when you stop it, it sort of puffs out more. It stays puffed out more than if it were laying straight. Again, I like a good trailer, and let's consider another kind of trailer. I have some, some curly tail trailers, which make an excellent choice of skirts. Uh, three inch sizes are my favorite. In some of the lakes, like Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas, and I don't know why, Sometimes the five and even six inch trailers are a very big deal for big bladed spinnerbaits. Now this, this is a, a good choice that I would call a good choice for, for weedy, uh, brushy areas, say in the spring with water temperatures around 60 degrees, that's a fairly cold water bait, fairly brushy or fairly, fairly heavy water. Now let's, let's look at another spinnerbait that's a favorite of mine, that's Charlie Campbell from Branson, Missouri, he also works with Brass Pro Shop. He used to make a, what we called a CC Special, and it was a great big giant spinnerbait like this one. And here's one uh, off of his basic design. Some number five and number six Colorado blades, either copper or nickel blades, and he throws it on about a half ounce head or even a three quarter ounce head. Now what Charlie will do with this, he'll put like a big skirt on it. Let's put a big white skirt like he'd put on for Table Rock. And Let's, uh, let's reverse the skirt again, like we started to do on that other one. Put it on there, and let's put, really fix it up for, say, Table Rock Lake or Bull Shoals Lake. Now, let's also put a long, a long, and, and often sometimes I change colors. Now, here is the long grub, or the long curly tail I talked about, that's, that's so good in the Bull Shoals Lakes. Let's put that on. Boop. Now, let, now we're really getting a big bait out of this, really getting big. And let's put one other thing, and in this compa compartment I have hundreds of trailer hooks. Now often in these lakes like Bull Shoals Lake or Table Rock Lake, you have an occasional cypress tree or cedar tree, an occasional log, but basically you're working open water. So now, what Charlie Campbell has found over the years, and what I've seen, and what bass tournaments have substantiated, you have a big bladed number seven or number eight Colorado blade with a trailer hook blade, a big number six uh, uh, trailer. Throw this on about 17 pound line on the steep rocky banks of, of a lake like Table Rock and just buzz it what we call Arkansas style. Just get your boat in real close and go just parallel right down the shoreline throwing this ahead of the boat, making this wake. And if you can, bump the stump, bump over the rocks, bump, bump the logs that are present. And as Charlie Campbell can probably well tell you from Bass Pro Shop, this is the big bass lure of those, of those White River lakes. So now you can see that there's really a huge variety of lures. Like, like the little bitty spinner bait that I, that I used today to catch some big five or six pound bass, we, we have progressed in our, in our discussion of spinner baits all the way up to the big CC special uh, that's so great for the White River lake. From, from Toledo Bend in the wintertime to Santee Cooper in the spring to, again, Lake Eufaula in Oklahoma. You can see that almost every lake has almost its own characteristic lure. So don't, don't feel like you have to use a certain lure. Build your own lures. It's so much fun. I just, just have, I, sometimes I take all the blades off. And you notice with all the components I have, I have every color and every size blade that's imaginable. Now that I've bit really big in willow leaves, you notice here I have a lot of four and a half size. These are number four and a half size blades. That's just a tremendous size blade. I have some fives, even some eights. So wherever you go and wherever you fish, play with them.
Try different combinations, and I think you'll really find some good fish, too. We're going to go to another spot. I want to show you one last place before, the, before it gets too dark. An entirely different pattern again. And you watch. I think we're going to have some exciting more action. So don't go away. Folks, now we're going to fish probably one of my favorite patterns with definitely my favorite lure. This is my number five. Roland Martin Big Bass Spinnerbait made by Blue Fox Tackle. And it has been my, without a doubt, my most successful spinnerbait. Here on Lake Okeechobee, as well as many of the Florida lakes, I like the gold blade. But in shad lakes, like the TVA chain of lakes uh, farther north, I'll go with the silver or even the white. But here at Okeechobee, with just a little bit of watercolor like we have today, the blue and the chartreuse combination is just an excellent choice. And it's one of uh, the choices of also Jimmy Houston and Hank Parker, who I know you've heard of and are great spinnerbait fishermen in their own rights. They also like this color as well. Okay, what's so special about the way we're going to fish spinnerbaits now? Well, you know, you can fish spinnerbaits fast on the top, buzzing them on the surface and catch fish sometime. And then again, you can fish spinnerbaits slow, deep on the bottom, like Cliff, Cliff Craft did on Toledo Bend that day in 15 feet of water. But to catch the most fish most of the time, I advocate slow rolling a spinnerbait. Now, how do you slow roll a spinnerbait? Well, you use the same kind of tackle like we've been using, standard five and a half foot casting rods. This is the Shimano 1553. I use a six to one, four to one ratio, two speed reel. I'm using 14 pound line. It's open water, deeper water. To slow roll, I'm picking out an ambush point. In this case, it's a hidden ambush point. It's a grass line that's under the water. There's a strip of eelgrass on this canal it's just a couple feet out from the bank. And to slow roll, what I'm basically doing is throwing up by the bank and I'm, I'm ticking the edge of the, of, the, of the eelgrass. I'm ticking over it. I'm just slowly rolling the spinnerbait and I'm feeling the grass. I'm feeling the grass. I know it's going to come to an end. I know the grass is going to come to an end. I keep rolling it out. I keep rolling it out. When I finally don't hit it, the grass anymore, I just barely keep contact with the line and let the spinnerbait slow roll and drop. The blade keeps rotating, the lure keeps moving towards you. It's not dropping down. It's moving towards you the whole time. And that's probably, without a doubt, 75% of my fish. Slow rolling this number five spinnerbait. Now one thing that I'm doing today that's kind of unique that I haven't been doing today is that I'm now fishing fairly open water. I'm now fishing a weed line, but it's not a real snaggy bad weed line. So whenever I can get away with it, whenever I can fish a trailer hook, I fish a trailer hook. And it's amazing in tournament competition just how many of the fish are caught on trailer hooks. Particularly on, one, on guys that use buzz baits on the surface or, or that wake spinner baits like they do in Washita or, or Oklahoma in the summertime, they'll wake spinner baits on the surface. These trailer hooks sometimes catch all the fish. Now, I don't know today, I just like to use it when I can get away with it. It's an extra precaution. It, per, it pays off in big percentages, particularly in tournament competition. Slowly drop that spinnerbait down, feel the edge of that eelgrass, and just let it cascade down. But keep the blade moving. That's the slow roll. Don't stop the blade. And don't stop the spinnerbait from coming towards you. Now, whether or not you're using a trailer hook or not, you'll often get weeds on your spinnerbait, particularly in fishing uh, here in South Florida, in canals or just, just anywhere that you choose to fish. What I do to, to eliminate the weeds is if I use heavy enough line and a stiff enough rod, I'll often feel the reed on there and I'll grab the rod like this and I'll jerk it real hard. Now, I'll actually tear the grass off just, just doing that. It looks stupid and dumb. But often, it not only tears the grass off, but it also elic elicits a strike on occasion. So that sudden snap and that sudden change of speed, oh boy, that bird likes to spinnerbait fish too, I see. But it often just snaps the, the lure off and it also elicits a strike. Now the last thing I'd like to have you concentrate on and think about is light levels and and just sunshine versus cloudiness and, and wind versus calm weather. The worst possible scenario for fishing spinnerbaits, and think about this for a second, is a completely calm day with no wind and bright sunshine. 
in a fairly clear water situation. That is the worst spinnerbait condition. The best spinnerbait condition that you can possibly find is fairly warm water temperatures versus cold water. Warm water is much, much more conducive for good spinnerbait fishing than, say, 70 degrees or better is just great. Dingy water, slightly off-colored water, other than clear water. Your second thing, a little bit of wind. In fact, a lot of wind. I go in tournament competition, I'm actually looking for windy points. I'm looking for the grass to blow in on, on, on the weed lines. I'm looking for stumps in the windy areas. I'm looking for wind blowing in on boat docks. I'm looking for wind blowing in on riprap. These are all good spinnerbait pattern conditions. And the last thing I look for is a good cloudy day. Now that with the clouds coming over, it's later in the evening, the clouds, the light level's dropping. And in fact, I'm a photographer and we measure light. And we, le we measure it in, uh, in uh, f-stops of light. And we know that with this cloud that's coming up now, we're, we're maybe only getting half as much light right now as we were uh, a couple hours back. So this is the time to catch big fish on spinnerbait. The fish come shallower and are more active. Wait a minute. No, that's not grass. No, no, I thought I was hung in the grass. That is not grass. Boys, that's a good old bass. That is a big, nice one. They're all big and nice, and particularly this one's staying deep right here. Oh, son, look at that, son. Oh, good, good bass. Oh, son, that's a good, that's a good bass. That's a, ooh, down underneath the boat. Dark water. I'm going to pull the trolling motor up. Oh, boy, you got to be careful. This, that's a good bass. That's a good bass. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, oh, get him out of the trolling motor. That's a big bass. That's what it's all about, folks. That is what it's spinnerbait fishing is all about. So I'll tell you what, now, the next time you want to catch a really big fish, don't be afraid to try and experiment with really good technique like we've shown you today. Giant bass aren't an accident. They're a product of a lot of hard work and a lot of searching and trying and experimenting. These are the kind of fish that you can catch on spinnerbait, so I hope you've enjoyed this presentation today. Spinnerbait fishing, Roland Martin style. See you again soon. Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Library, presented by today's foremost professional sportsman, who will share proven methods and techniques that will help you become a better and more successful fisherman. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and would like to take this opportunity to invite you to visit the Bass Pro Shops National Headquarters in Springfield, Missouri. Outdoor World, with over 150,000 square feet of shopping magic. A showcase for everything found in the Bass Pro catalogs and much more. Waterfalls. Restaurants five fresh and saltwater aquariums, endless displays of top quality hunting gear, and the largest fishing department in the world. Visit the Outdoor World showroom today and for our latest catalog call 1-800-BASS-PRO. The catalog's free and so is the call. Thank you for letting us help you have fun outdoors. <laughs>